Hey, it's Dr. Brad with some dramatic spacesuits, and that is a Chinese rocket booster is an uncontrolled re-entry somewhere going to crash down on Earth. Not saying that to be dramatic, that is the actual situation we're in. So over the weekend, a China Long March 5B, their biggest rocket, took up the second main part of the Tiangong space station. This is China's new space station. Now, that bit went to space, all fine. Except the rocket booster has now been slowly in an uncontrolled re-entry. So sometimes, and hopefully usually, bits of these rocket boosters or satellites have a little bit of fuel so that we can steer them into the Earth's atmosphere either to completely break up or mostly break up and land in the ocean. In this case, that is not happening. So as it slowly gets towards the Earth, the, a little bit of the Earth's atmosphere creates a drag slowing it down so it falls more, causing it to slow more so it falls more and so on, kind of like water going down a drain. And so the problem what we have now is because we don't know when it's going to actually happen or re-enter on Earth, uh, and because this process happens over a little bit of time, we can't pinpoint when and therefore where it's going to come crashing down. Lots of groups are modeling it, like Aerospace Corp, Space Force, Currently, it's estimated to happen sometime Sunday, the 31st of July. Uh, but there's currently about a 12-hour plus or minus range, so it could be before or after. Now, given this thing orbits about 25,000 kilometers an hour, even if you're off by a half hour, that's thousands of kilometers in terms of where it could happen. What we do know is that the very paths that the satellite, or sorry, the rocket booster is coming over, and therefore the areas that this can happen... So we do know that if you're in the far north part of the Earth, so kind of above 50 degrees, 52 degrees latitude, or below 52 degrees in the south, you're completely safe. So the penguins and reindeer are safe, and northern parts of Canada and Europe are, but that leaves nearly all of Australia, Africa, most of Africa, South America, large parts of Asia, you know, you name it, most of the world. So as we get closer to that point, uh, it will slow down. We will get a clear point of where and when it will happen. So this is really going to be a case of watching to make sure it doesn't fall on you. It doesn't fall on somewhere else. Uh, and a bit of unintended excitement from this past launch. So what does this mean for you? Uh, well, there is a small chance that you may be in the right spot at the right time to see a really cool fireworks show of a rocket booster burning up in the skies above you. There is a, such a small chance this even lands on land. I mean, uh, most of the Earth is water, so there's a smaller chance it lands on land. An even smaller, smaller, smaller chance it lands near people. And essentially an almost zero chance that it hits someone. Um, more likely that there will be someone hit by lightning this weekend rather than a piece of space junk. So that is a good thing. But this actually has happened before, and that's kind of the bad part of this. Uh, last year, when the first part of the space station went up, it went on a similar rocket, and we had a similar problem, uh, playing a lot of uh, watching in the skies, passing over Australia just an hour before or so, crashing over the coast of the Maldives. So definitely something to watch, not definitely something to worry about, though, and stay tuned for updates on how this all progresses. And in some other really interesting news this past week, Russia has confirmed they are leaving the International Space Station after 2024. Now, a lot of people thought this means they're leaving in 2024. No, the key word here is after. And this is important. We've talked about this in previous videos. The current space station is under agreement between U.S., European partners, and Russia through 2024. That was always the plan. Last year, the U.S. said that they wanted to extend the operation till 2030. And this would give time for private companies to build their own space stations and take over the activity of low Earth orbit science so this allows NASA and its partners, like Australia, to focus on the moon. But what really has happened is saying, okay, well, we agree to this. Russia never said that they would agree to extending to 2030. Uh, and in the past year, there's been a lot of, well, you know, will they, won't they, will they, won't they. Uh, and this letter confirms essentially what we've kind of thought is that, yes, they will agree till 2024, and then they will exit afterwards. Currently, it's looking at probably 2028, because Russia's plans are to build their own space station, much like China is. They have a first module already being built. They're hoping to have that ready or launched in 2025. It'll take time for it all to come together. So if they're doing this for 2028, they will still participate, most likely, in the International Space Station till 2028, and that's pretty much close till 2030. 
So some very interesting statements and progress or lack thereof happening in this sector. But what does it all mean? Well, probably not a lot, surprisingly. Uh, the plan is to leave the International Space Station by the end of the decade. It may have to happen a year or two earlier. That's not a dramatic surprise. Uh, it is already well past its date. Um, probably the biggest impact is on the future of Russian-American cooperation. We've seen cooperation in space on the International Space Station at least for over two decades. We can even extend it back to the Apollo-Soyuz missions in the mid-70s. And this has always had a great way of uniting um, these two countries in particular together to work together, even during heightened tension times here on Earth. So hopefully that can somehow continue into the future. It doesn't mean the International Space Station is going to fall out of the sky, and it doesn't mean the end of space, just a different phase. So I hope you enjoyed these really two interesting stories. Make sure to subscribe on YouTube to stay up to date for more exciting space news.